Hi, I'm Michael Shiplett, and I'm a Regional Director at Gordian. Today's presentation is about job order contracting and how to calculate an adjustment factor. But first, we need to talk about what is job order contracting, how does it work, understanding the price book, which is at the center of each program, which is called a construction task catalog, We'll talk again about how to calculate an adjustment factor for these programs, and then we'll review at the end of the presentation. Job order contracting is an indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity type of contract, IDIQ. All job order contracts are a competitively bid master contract that enables contractors to complete a substantial amount of work with one bid. Tasks in each one of the job order contracts are based on unit prices. Every unit price includes an allowance for labor, material, and equipment. The construction task catalog also has unit prices for the installation of an item and for the demolition of an item. The value proposition of job order contracting is that it saves the public agency that implements it both time and money. It also provides transparency and auditability to the process. So how does job order contracting work? Well, think of job order contracting as an umbrella type of contract. And underneath that umbrella, you can order lots of different scopes of work. Restroom renovations, roofing replacements, HVAC systems. All of those types of scopes of work can be ordered under a job order contract. What is the scope of work of a job order contract? It's whatever you can find within the construction task catalog. The price book becomes the scope of work. When an owner would like to engage with the job order contract, they simply follow the process of alerting their contractor to the fact that there is a project. The contractor looks at the project with the owner and with any subcontractors that may be a part of it. The contractor takes their the thorough time to examine the scope of work and any contract drawings that may be a part of it. And then they return to their office and they use our system and it gives them electronic access to the construction task catalog. They are able to assemble their proposal in the construction task catalog, multiplied by the proper quantity for the item, multiplied by their competitively bid adjustment factor. Supplemental job orders are priced the same way along with each individual job order thereafter. Individual projects will always go through the same process. The joint scope meeting is critical to the success for both the owner and the contractor. It's during the joint scope meeting that the owner gets to let the contractor know all of the different facets of the job. It's at the joint scope meeting where the contractor gets to learn all about the building that they are about to renovate, including lifting up ceiling tile to find any maybe unforeseen conditions, or pulling up carpet tile to see what's underneath the floor that they're about to remove. So the joint scope process is very critical. It helps to lead to a far more accurate proposal uh, in the end. All job order contracts are made up of several contract documents, the first of which is the solicitation that the public agency runs. That can be either a request for proposal where a best value award is made, or it can also be a low bid gets it strategy or an invitation for bid. That solicitation is considered part of the front end documents and it will also have the terms and conditions. Another contract document is the construction task catalog. This is a customized price book that Gordian puts together on behalf of their clients. And the pricing is customized to be reflective of the economy of our client. The third contract document that we help put together is the technical specifications. They tell the contractor the quality level of every item that is within the construction task catalog. There can also be warranty information and care and use instructions. The technical specifications are critical and they must be tied to every item that's found in the construction task catalog. Understanding the construction task catalog may be one of the biggest hurdles that the bidding contractor has to grapple with initially. 
The construction task catalog is a large volume of pre-priced construction tasks, upwards of some 180,000 construction related tasks with all divisions of construction represented by the book. All tasks have a very robust description, a very detailed description, and then all will have a unit price for the installation of the item that is referred to. All unit prices are based on local labor, material, and equipment cost. Gordian does the pricing research to help establish the unit costs that are found in each one of the books. The tasks in the book represent the scope of work for the contract. The construction task catalog is laid out in a very logical way and it's easy to learn how to navigate. You will notice that every line item has a line item number, a description, a unit of measure, and then a unit price for installation and demolition. Lots of line items throughout the construction task catalog also have modifiers associated with it. This is how a contractor can account for different hardware packages, uh, whether it's chrome or brass or a satin finish. Brass is usually or can be the standard in the book and then if it needs to be modified to a satin finish there is a modifier that accounts for that price differential. Modifiers are extremely important throughout the construction task catalog. You do not want to miss those as a contractor when you're putting together a proposal. At the end of the process, you want to submit the most accurate proposal you can that is a direct reflection of the detailed scope of work. So it's important that you learn the format of the construction task catalog early on in the process. The construction task catalog that we typically publish for our clients usually contains around 180,000 construction related line items. But what happens if a scope of work you're pricing does not have a task that is in the price book. What happens then? When you encounter this situation, you will have to create a non pre priced task, meaning that the 180,000 cat line item catalog does not have the item you're looking for. This can happen commonly in the LED lighting section. LED lighting changes pretty rapidly. We build a section for LED lighting, but new products come out all the time. If you are looking for a certain LED fixture and cannot find it in the price book, you will create or be instructed to create a non pre priced task. You can actually add to the price book over time. The contract also has a clause in it that if a non pre priced item is used on three different proposals, in the next contract year that line item can then be added to the price book. So think of the construction task catalog as a living and breathing uh, document. Non pre priced tasks can also put a burden on a contractor that they must prove the unit price that they've just created. Lots of times the contracts require them to get three quotes. That is to back up the unit price that they have created. So remember, look in the price book first and if you can't find the item you're looking for, feel free to create a non pre priced item. Just know you will have to give some backup to the owner to prove the unit price you've just created. Within job order contracting, one of the things that you will encounter over the course of the contract are pricing fluctuations. They can definitely be surrounding copper, concrete, metal studs, drywall. The contract itself and the solicitation that the public agency puts out typically has a clause on how to deal with pricing fluctuations. You must, however, as you calculate your adjustment factor for the first year of your contract, include a percentage in there for the rate of inflation over the first year of that contract. There's lots of online resources where you can see uh, and do some history on how much construction is fluctuated within your area. But be certain that as you're doing your calculation uh, for your factor that you take into account the rate of inflation over the first year of your contract. At the very front of each Gordian construction task catalog is a section that's titled Understand the CTC. You'll hear lots of Gordian account managers refer to this as the big note. Take the time to read this prior to calculating your adjustment factors. In the big note it talks about what needs to be included in your adjustment factor. 
Things like overhead, profit, insurance, and general condition items need to be calculated into your adjustment factor. Consider your business costs and risks and consider inflation. And most importantly, bid responsibly. There is a risk of a low adjustment factor, and that risk is uh, you might not make very much money on any of your projects, and if you bid too high, you may not be awarded too many job orders. As always in the competitive bid market, there's a sweet spot, so we encourage you to bid responsibly. How to price a JOC contract can be one of the biggest challenges uh, as you're going through the solicitation and developing your response. So understanding how the construction task catalog is put together is the first element to understanding how to properly calculate an adjustment factor. Understanding the rules of the game is another key element. Uh, so be sure that you read the six to seven pages of the section titled Using the Construction Task Catalog for more tips and rules of the game. Understanding the rules of the game is one of the critical aspects of successfully bidding on a job order contract. Be certain to read the very front section of the price book known as um, Understanding the Construction Task Catalog. This section will talk about that the unit prices are for the complete and in-place construction of the item. The unit prices include local labor, material, and equipment Additional hour rates are not allowed in any proposal. The unit prices include the cost of delivery to the project site, unloading, storage and handling. Delivery height is up to two and a half stories. Unit prices include testing, calibration, balancing, etc. for new work. Unit prices include fasteners, bolts, anchors, adhesives for new work and the unit prices for tasks such as windows, door frames, countertops, etc. already include sealant, meaning that you will not be adding the sealant or the caulking as separate line items. It's already included. In addition, demo prices include loading the item into a truck or a dumpster. If the item is demolished as part of a different task, it will not be paid for separately. Contractor will be paid for installed quantities only. Waste is included in the unit price. If you need additional money for waste, you will have to include that in your adjustment factor. Throughout the construction task catalog, you will see that there are assemblies at your disposal. And the assembly can include the conduit, the elbow, and all of the fittings. There's also a component where you can price the conduit separately, the elbow separately, uh, or the junction box separately. Assemblies, however, will take precedence throughout the contract. The unit prices include working height of 14 feet for all work except masonry. So if you're working below the 14 foot mark, you cannot charge the owner for scaffolding or a scissor lift. If you are installing the item above 14 feet, then by all means include a scissor lift or some type of scaffolding as a separate line item in your proposal. Four foot is the working height for masonry, so if you're working any higher than four feet on masonry, be sure to include scaffolding in your proposal. Dumpsters are always allowed as a separate task, and you can select them by size, 20, 30, or 40 yard dumpsters. Moving and returning furniture occupying less than 55% of the, of the floor area, for example, moving a classroom furniture to paint, that cost is already included within the line item. Labor for protecting work in place, uh, for example, a laborer to stay after a concrete pour. If you want that type of expense, that needs to be in your adjustment factor. Minor barricades and signage are already included in the unit price. In your factor, you need to include cost allowances for a portable toilet, a field office, or field office equipment for the contractor's use. And then finally, layout site engineering for work itself. You will not be paid separately for items like that. That calculation needs to be in your factor. Overhead costs that you need to consider when you calculate your adjustment factor is mobilization, project management, costs for joint scoping of each project, proposal development time, 
permit procurement for, the la for your labor, submittals and shop drawings, your site superintendent, your general and administrative expenses. Your overhead and profit needs to be in your factor as well as your subcontractor's overhead and profit, your bonding and insurance, your vehicles and gas, your consumables, your delta in your prevailing wage versus what your market costs, uh, and other expenses. So think about that as you're putting together your factor. Think about all the general condition expense it takes you to manage a project. That expense needs to be in your adjustment factor. The importance of your adjustment factor is that it is used to price individual work orders. The price proposal total becomes the lump sum job order price. Now a couple of explanations here. The price book offers the unit price times the quantity times your adjustment factor will equal the total for each task. All the tasks are added together which gives you your total job order price. Also know that job order contracting is a performance based contract. So long as you do good work, you do it on time and you submit accurate price proposals, the owner has the incentive to give you another job and another job and another job. You earn your way to additional work by doing great performance. You have to take that into account as you calculate your factor. So how do you calculate an adjustment factor? The easiest way that I have ever found to uh, calculate an adjustment factor is during the bidding phase, when the owner publishes their solicitation, they also publish the price book that we have created on behalf of that agency. You as a successful contractor have done projects in the last year, year and a half, and the recommendation is to dust those projects off the shelf pull out the proposals you created before and now reprice those projects using the new price book that the owner has given you access to and look at the value in that construction task catalog and now reprice the project from the new construction task catalog. After you've grabbed all the line items, be sure that you add on your overhead, your profit and other business considerations. This will help you to calculate your adjustment factor. So in the example that we have here, think about the fact that this interior, interior renovation will have 12 interior doors plus hinges uh, plus hardware. Doors are going to be 3 foot by 7 foot and they're going to be a hollow core. They're going to be grade 2 lock sets with knobs. You're going to have interior lighting, plumbing fixtures, uh, and replace a boiler. You're going to calculate that this work will be done during normal working hours. So, you take that scope of work and you now price it using the price book. You'll notice that your direct costs from the CTC, and these are for example purposes only, to replace the boiler, the new CTC will pay you $33,000. The doors and hardware, the CTC, the, the price book is offering you $8,200. The lighting has a value of $13,000 and the plumbing is $11,886. The estimate that you previously had submitted to the owner and were successful in having awarded to you, what you charged for the boiler was $34,000. The doors and hardware was $7,250. The lighting, $12,750. And the plumbing, $10,500. The total you submitted to the owner, your bare cost was $65,000. Now you have to take into account your overhead and profit. So you would take your direct cost of $65,000, your overhead would be $6,500, your profit would be another 10%, your subtotal would be $78,650. The price book, however, is offering you $66,344.12. To establish your coefficient, divide your subtotal of $78,650 against the price you have from the CTC, which is $66,344.12, giving you an adjustment factor of 1.1855. Do that on two, three, four projects. This will give you a value for the book. It will also then tell you what that adjustment factor needs to be. That's one way to calculate a factor. 
Another direct way to calculate your factor is to calculate how much general condition expense you will have for the first year of the contract. In the solicitation, the owner will typically tell you what the approximate yearly value will be. How much work will they order from you each year under the contract? In this example, we'll say that the owner is going to offer us $3 million worth of work over the first year of the contract. How much does it cost you to manage $3 million worth of work? Add your general condition expense and divide it by how much work you think you will do each year. Here is an example of some of the general condition expenses you can anticipate for one year. Bear in mind your company may be different. But do not forget your project manager, your superintendent, their pickup trucks, company cars, gas and oil, chemical toilets, bonds, insurance. All of that has a cost to you. Be certain to add all of those costs up for one year. Then you do some simple division. And that simple division is how much work do you think you will do in the next year? Will it be 1 million, 2 million, 3 million? You can divide your general condition expense based on the volume you think that you will do. In this instance, we're going to use $3 million. Divide your general condition expense of 362,800 by your $3 million. It gives you a 12% differential. Remember that the volume, how much work you do, is driven by contractor performance. Now determine how much overhead, in addition to your general conditions, you typically need to survive for that year. Is it 5%, 6 7 or 8%? It could be lower, it could be higher. In this example, we'll use 5%. Now determine your profit margin. Is that also 5 6 7 or 8%? You could be in a very hyper-competitive market, and maybe it's lower than 4%, or it could be higher than 8 But somewhere along the lines, you need to settle on your overhead rate and your profit rate. In this instance, we'll use a profit margin of 5%. So add it all together. The contractor's done an assessment of the unit prices and realizes that they need 100% of the catalog value. So they need a starting factor of 1.00. Now you're going to add on your general condition expense, and in this instance it would be 0.12 or an additional 12%. You have 5% overhead you need to charge, and then you would like to make a 5% profit. Your 1.00 plus your 0.12 for general conditions, your 0.05 for your overhead, and your 0.05 for your profit, tells you that you need to calculate a factor of 1.22 in order to make money under this particular contract. Now, your calculation is that, well, I can offer a 5% discount on the price book, so my starting basis will be 0.95. I'm still going to add the same general condition expense of 0.12, I'm still going to need 5% in overhead, and I'm still going to need 5% in profit. Now my factor is 1.17. So it's critical, your assessment of the unit value of the price book. And then as our final example here, let's say that after you've done your assessment of the unit prices, you realize that you need to charge 5% above the prices that are published in the book. You also then need to take into account your general conditions of 12%, your overhead of 5%, and your profit of 5% means that you need to bid a factor of 1.27. So understanding the unit prices and their value is critical to your assessment and your calculation of factors. Somewhere in the middle there is the right adjustment factor for your company. The risk of a low adjustment factor is you'll be offered one project and it might not take you very long to realize that at such a low factor you cannot make any money. And if you cannot make any money, you're not going to want to price more than one or two projects. The risk of a high adjustment factor is that the owner may call you out on only one project and realize that the proposal value that you've just submitted is very high in relation to their budget. So carefully consider as you calculate your factor. There's the right one in there for you. 
Contractors can expect during the life of the contract that they may prepare incidental drawings or sketches to be submitted along with each proposal. Think about that expense as you're calculating your factor. During the proposal review process with you sitting down with the owner and discussing an individual proposal you've put together, you may have to justify quantities. You may have to explain your math. And you may have to explain why you've used some line items within a proposal. Remember that you are building a long-term relationship with, this, with your owner and you will be submitting highly detailed proposals each and every time. So there's nothing that's being withheld from the owner. You are showing the owner exactly which carpet you've put in the proposal and what the quantity is. Sit down and discuss it with the owner. Bear in mind that the margins on some of the items in the price book will be to your advantage and some will be to the owner's advantage. On a whole throughout the book we see that the book is very fair but do notice that you may have some that are not in your financial advantage and some that are. Some projects that you price will be more profitable than others. Also bear in mind that you will have to hold the required licenses as specified by the owner throughout the solicitation. And be certain that as you are putting together each proposal that you are catching everything that is related to that scope of work. Do not leave anything out of your proposals. If you're doing excavation, be sure that you pick up backfill and compaction. If you're putting in a water line, be certain that you pick up the insulation or pick up all of the hangers. There will be a proposal review process for each proposal you submit. This gives the owner an opportunity to review the proposal for accuracy, but it also gives the owner an opportunity to point out when you may have left something out of the proposal. The risk of a low adjustment factor is that you might not do a lot of work or you realize that you've bid too low and you try and put inappropriate line items in a proposal and then you have to try and defend them with an owner. That can damage your relationship between contract and owner. It can lead to a contractor putting unsupportable tasks within a proposal or padding quantities or exaggerating a, a, exaggerating a quantity trying to get to a certain dollar value. It can lead to long delays in developing a work order, uh, and it can take the owner longer to review the proposal. It can also create something that you definitely do not want in this environment, which is an adversary relationship with your owner. Remember that you want to do good work, do it on time, and submit accurate price proposals so that you can do another job and another job and another job. It's performance-based. An adversary relationship with the owner can result in a re reduced volume of work, it will shorten the length of your contract potentially, and it can lead to lost profits. As you are responding to the owner's solicitation and as you are calculating your adjustment factor, here's some key points to think about as you go through the process. Focus on the potential value of the contract. What has the owner said in their solicitation? How much can you do on a yearly basis? One million, two million, three? Can you do four? Think about that value though. That value becomes very important when you go to calculate your adjustment factor. Evaluate the prices in the construction task catalog. You'll have to get your bearings here. Uh, is it reflective of your local market? What do your subcontractors think about the unit prices? You need their influence as to where you are going to set your adjustment factor. Remember that subcontractor markup needs to be taken into account in your adjustment factor. Know the guidelines for using the construction task catalog. Remember that's the section that is published at the very front of the book. Share the price book with your subcontractor community. Have them assess their sections and have them potentially bid an adjustment factor to you. This comes especially true in the mechanical and electrical and the plumbing sections. If you are a general contractor having to calculate an adjustment factor, you're going to need as much information as you need from key subcontractors like mechanical and electrical. Remember that contractor performance is going to drive volume in this program. Think about your ability to market this program and the services that you can offer. Be responsive to the owner when they call you out for projects. 
Submit accurate proposals and do so the first time. Submitting inaccurate price proposals can lead to an adversary relationship between you and the owner, such as exaggerated quantities or unsupported items. It can also harm trust between you and the owner. So submit accurate proposals each and every time. Keep your project site safe and clean. High quality construction at all times. Complete your work on time and do on-time closeout for the owner. Get them the as-built and all the closeout documents so that you can go on to another job and another job and another job. Thanks for watching today's presentation and good luck with your job order contracting efforts.